Welcome to another episode of Friday Night Alive Power Hour with your whole soldier of self-mastery right here out of my studio in Stockton, California. Today we have a special guest, and uh, we're going to get into that in a minute here. He goes by the name of Edwin Cabrera from Manassas, Virginia. We're going to be talking a little bit about self-empowerment, personal self-empowerment, mind training, and we're also going to be adding in some business information for those of you that might have an interest in developing business. I hope that wherever you find yourself today, you are handling your business and you are at a, a peak state of mind. At the top of the chat, that link will be there for those of you that are interested in getting the little red book. I would highly encourage you to get it. It is It makes a great gift also. And once again, my friends, those of you that are stuck, that you're having a difficult time right now with your mindset, your lifestyle, whatever it may be, my friend, we are offering life coaching services here. Opened up two spots a month to soldiersofselfmastery.com. Uh, and you can actually get in touch with me through that uh, web link or my personal website. So that's it for uh, house cleaning. And we have a special guest tonight. And I'm going to let him do a little bit of sharing. His name is Edwin Cabrera. He is from uh, Manassas, Virginia. Edwin Cabrera is a retired New York City school teacher. I'm going to let him share a little bit about that, where, where he comes from. He is a martial artist, and he is also a business owner. We saw, oh, I forgot the proverb. Let me read it real quick. A, this is out of the Bible, uh, the book of James. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, my friends. Oh, that hurts. That hurts. But I got to get it out there. So, Edwin, the uh, uh, the studio is yours. The camera is yours. You want to share a little bit, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, um, where you're at today, and uh, just let us know. Hi, right, Santos. Thank you. It is a pleasure to be here. I mean, I'm honored that you invited me to, you know, share a little bit about my life story and things that are going on in my life and how I've gotten to where I am right now. Um, I really appreciate that. Basically, like you said, I'm born and raised in New York City, and I, I was a teacher there for 26 and a half years before I decided to retire. So um, I've been in Manassas, Virginia now for about six years, you know, so I'm really a New Yorker. <laughs> But um, I got in here because, you know, I got tired of the city life and I decided, you know, I needed to make a move, you know, a nice um, change in my life because that's what it, it's, it's been an evolution. Like for all of us, it's been an evolution and time, you know, changes your thoughts. I thought I was going to live and die in New York City. To me, it was like bury me under the Willie B. You know, if you don't know about New York City, that's the Williamsburg Bridge. You know, so that was that was my mentality back then. And, and as time went on, I realized that, you know, there's a whole world out there and that in order to really open up your mind and open up the world, you've got to change and you've got to move. And sometimes you've got to get out of the old neighborhood because, like I said, I was basically born and raised in the neighborhood, never really left until, you know, I was in my 40s that I decided once you get to about what they consider midlife, you know, a lot of people call it a midlife crisis. I call it a midlife awareness, you know, because you get to a point in your life where you now decide, okay, do I want to spend the next, let's say 40 years, you spend so many, 40 years, you've gotten to the forties. Now you decide, okay, you look forward and you start thinking about what are my next 40 years going to be like? And instead of just living and, you know, just going through the 40 years like you did, now you start to create the next 40 years and you start to open your mind up to what are the possibilities for you. And so that's what happened to me. And that's when I decided to move out and just basically, you know, decided to start working online. You know, I figured that if I retire, that basically I, I worked 26 years and you work to a certain point and then you retire financially, you get to a certain point, <laughs> then you retire and you come back and you get half of your salary. <laughs> yeah. You know, right? So you work all those years and then you retire and you get half of your salary. So I had to figure out a way to get the other half. 
And that's when I started working online. Well, actually, I started working online just as I was about to retire. So I was making that transition from learning how to work online, learning how to build a business, learning how to really, you know, get out there in this new medium, you know, which is open to everyone. You know, this is something that people don't realize. There are so many opportunities online that it's incredible. It's just that a small minority of people figure it out. You know, they say, you know, 90% uh, from 100, 90% drop out, 10% figure it out. And so that's where, that's where I'm at to help people kind of bridge that gap and understand how to, how to do this, you know, and you said something about, you know, a man with two minds, you know, I'm going to go, I'm going to go off on that one because that's a real good one because you really have to, if you want to change, you really have to kind of be like a, a missile, zoom, zooming in and focusing in on what you want and how you want, how you see your life becoming, you know, not what your life was, you know, because what it was, it's that, that, that's past. Now, how you let that affect you for the future is very important. Sometimes you've got to, you know, it's not what happens to you, it's how you deal with what happens to you. You know, but also going back to that focus, you got to have that that um, commitment to say, look, I'm going to make a change no matter what comes. I'm going to do it because I'm going to do it because there's nothing else because I'm going to do it. That's it. <laughs> you know, so that's what, um, you know, so that's where I'm at, you know, and that's where I got to the point, especially working online, because there are many obstacles to working online and building your and just, you know, enjoying your life. You know, right now, man, I. I feel life is good, you know, and things are great. And that's what I love to share that with everyone. So go ahead. Life, life is good. I see the background. Life is good. <laughs> now, Edwin, let me ask you, you, you're an educator. You still are an educator. In fact, we all are educators. Even, you know, I, I know maybe some people might disagree. I know that we have some viewers online. I want to thank you once again. I want to uh, say that it is an honor and a pr privilege to be in front of all of you uh, even the drunkard can educate somebody. Even the problem gambler can educate somebody. I know that doesn't sound very positive, but it is true because by the way that we live, regardless if it's negative or positive, we are educating, we are influencing other people. Now, Edwin, your background is in education. What, uh, what was your back? What was your, uh, uh when you were teaching, what, what subject or subjects did you specialize in? I'm, I'm very curious. I was a physical education and math teacher. I did about half of my years in physical education. And the first half, actually, I did in math because they needed a math teacher. You know, I have a master's degree from physical education from New York University. But um, and I also have a master's degree, actually, from New York Tech for uh, uh, educational computers and stuff. So. But um, I was a middle school teacher and elementary school. We did uh, math and, and physical education. How oh, interesting. Now, you are on YouTube. What, what is your YouTube channel? What is your handle on YouTube? Um, I, oh, wow. I believe it's Edwin Cabrera. I'm not sure, but I think it's Edwin Cabrera on YouTube. I'd, I'd have to double check that to, to make sure because I got a couple of channels that I'm working with, but basically the main one is Edwin Cabrera. Okay, so if somebody wanted to get a hold of you, Edwin, they can go through your website personally, uh, Edwin Cabrera, which we have in the chat, edwincabrera.com. That's yeah. correct, right? Yeah. You can find me on edwincabrera.com or edwincabrera27 on Facebook. Okay, so there you have it. Now, you're also a martial artist. Um, I'm, I'm kind of curious because martial arts has a lot to do with repetition, and it also has a lot to do with your mind. Now, uh, most of my audience, uh, the followers that follow me here on YouTube, are, are people that I'm working with, obviously. Some might be new um, from different parts of the world. And my, my background, and one of the major reasons why I'm on YouTube is self-empowerment. And I want to help people overcome negative addictions, mainly problem gambling that's been a huge thing in my life i've been able to crush it i'm very grateful number one to the lord but i'm also running into a lot of people that are having some very serious challenges and i know it's 
this is where the battle is going on and this is where the battle needs to be won. Earlier, I talked about a double-minded man. Mm -hmm. A double-minded man is unstable. I'm curious, uh, obviously your martial arts, your, your education, all of these things that you've trained in obviously helps you uh, work with the mind. Uh, um, have you ever, uh, I'm just curious, have you ever struggled with addiction? Oh, definitely. Are you kidding? <laughs> Um, I'm born and raised in the Lower East Side of Manhattan, and we were surrounded with drugs, gangs, uh, you know, poverty. You know, so, you know, we felt, I fell, I'm not going to talk about we, I'm going to talk about me. I fell into all of those drugs, alcohol, hanging out, all of those things. But we also, I also had a focus of helping people, you know, so I didn't, you know, we all have our addictions and i mean sometimes just you know we we say that they're habits bad habits but they're really addictions <laughs> we try to we try to give them a nice name but it's still an addiction and even to today you know i struggle with with that because like they say you you know it's your relationship let's say to alcohol it's your relationship to that you know i i give you i give you an example i was telling my my girlfriend i said I'm still, you know, like they say, you know, a, a recovering alcoholic because basically it's not whether you drink or not, it's your relationship to the alcohol, it's your relationship to how you felt on alcohol. So when you drink a little, sometimes, you know, you, 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 you gotta be careful because you can easily fall back because you like alcohol. That's the whole thing. It's your relationship, it's your psychological connection to that addiction, no matter what it is, is it gives you a certain sense of satisfaction, a certain sense of feeling good, or or it brings you back to all those memories when you know you were hanging out with all your friends and stuff, you know, and doing all these other things, you know. So it's that kind of connection that you have that you have to be careful with and you have to control and you have to keep, you have to keep on top of it. And so sometimes, and some people can easily boom, fall, like they say, fall off the wagon and you're back to where you started, you know, and some people, you know, can't control it to a certain extent, you know. So I just stay away from alcohol completely. I have not drank. I don't drink, you know, I don't, you know, I don't do none of that stuff that I used to do and got to, like I said, I got to a certain point in my life around, around 40s where I started to say, okay, if I continue on the track that I am now, physically speaking, if I continue putting these uh, substances into my body, your body is, it, it takes about 20 years for your, your DNA and your, your whole structure for your body to change. That's why people get sick after, you know, when they get to a certain age, because they have been gradually kind of chopping away at their body with the substances that they put into them, whether they are um, food substances, whether they are uh, alcoholic, or they are, you know, THC, whatever it is you're putting into your body, it gradually has an effect on, you know, uh, basically breaking down your body so that when you get to a certain age, now you, the age alone has broken down your body because you're a certain age. But now on top of that, you have all these things coming together. And that's when you're starting the cancers, you're getting into all, you know, the the, the lung problems and, you know, digestive problems, so forth and so on. Anyway, so the point is that I got to a certain point, a point in my life in my mid forties where I said, hmm, started looking forward. If I continue doing what I've done in the past 20 years, when I hit 60, which is I'm 63 now, when I hit 60, hmm, why am I gonna, where am I gonna be at, you know? So I started thinking about health and about the, my future health. And that's when I started saying, I gotta, I gotta cut this crap out because it's not help, it's not gonna help me in the future, you know. And that's when I started thinking about a more healthy lifestyle and getting away from all of those things that we did when we were supposedly when you're younger, you do this stuff, but some people don't change, don't it just continues on forever. So anyway, I made a stop to all that crap. And you analyze, you began to really seriously analyze. Now, let me ask you this, Edwin. Um, I, I see that we have some viewers. Um, that's great. Um, oh, I'm kind of a little bit challenged with the fact that I can't see anybody chatting, uh, asking. But if you would have kept going, Edwin, if you would have kept going in the direction that you were going in, 
where do you think you might be today? If you had, if you hadn't stopped and analyzed your situation, mm. obviously you're looking back and you're looking forward. Mm -hmm. The mind is amazing. Yes. The mind is amazing. Where would you be right now? I mean, I, I know you, I don't want you to talk too much about it, but where would you, where do you believe you might be today? If you kept going down that path of feeding your mind with all of these, uh, I call them beg beggarly, beggarly elements. Well, you know, I was functioning, you know, they say, like they say, a functioning alcoholic, you know, so I always maintain that I to my life and because I love, I love to be independent. I don't want to depend on anybody. So I make, I make sure that I can take care of myself. So I would still be more or less where I am now. I don't think I would be as healthy as I am now, but I think I would still be more or less where I am because I was always focused in on, like I say, being independent and taking care of myself. I took pride in that, you know, I don't need or want anyone to, to take care of me. So that's where I started to, you know, realize that if I want to be strong in the future, then I got to be strong now, you know, so. You know. So it could have, if there's a strong possibility there that, um, you know, because you analyzed and because you have put a check, a stop, uh, the possibility is that it could have been even worse right now for you. It could have been. Yeah, sure. Could be. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Now. Obviously, we, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful, obviously, uh, of, of people like yourself, because, again, you're an example. You know, we're dealing with a lot of, you know, there's a war going on. There, there is a there is a literal uh, physical. Uh, well, I should. Yeah, it is. It, it, it actually goes into the physical world, but it's a spiritual to me. It's very spiritual because it's unseen. There's a battle. I call it a satanic battle that's being unleashed against humanity through all of these substances, through problem gambling, through advertising. Uh, you know, I'm focusing a little bit more on problem gambling because a lot of my audience is, is uh, uh, kind of challenged in this area. And I want to see every each and every one of them. I get emails, but I want to see each and every one of them uh, gain the total victory. Uh, we were just talking about what could happen uh, what what you know? What are the results? What are going to be the consequences if we keep going down a path mm -hmm. we already know is destructive? Man, we don't. I don't. I don't like to think about that, but that's reality. Um, that is reality. So I had a I had another. So obviously, you know, I, I you know I, I know that you're you're in business today. You're doing. You're obviously you're doing a whole lot better than than. Uh, than you were last week or last month. I, I like to go on this uh, type of mindset that we we are either in a growth zone or, or we're not. We're either better than we were this morning or we're getting worse. And this battle that we are all facing, all of us, even those of us that have uh, crushed certain negative addictions, we still face temptations, we still face the triggers, and there's a battle. It is a battle within the mind mm -hmm. that is going on. You want to add to that before my next question? <laughs> okay. I thought you were going to ask the question and stuff. No, that's, that's a definite, you know, you have to have a purpose beyond, let's say your addiction. You know, that's what you really have to look for. Um, let me, I'll give you a quick story that I, I, I heard, I read somewhere, uh, uh, the granddaughter goes up to the grandfather and she's crying. Oh, granddad, oh, I'm, I'm, I, I feel so bad. And he said, but why are you crying? And he, she says, because you're going to die. And he says, what do you mean I'm going to die? Well, because they said that if you smoke cigarettes, you die. And that's when it hit him, you know, because he wanted to be there for his granddaughter's wedding. And she was so affected by, you know, that, that idea that be, if he continues smoking, he's going to die. He's not going to be around for her. And he was, he felt that so deeply that then right then and there, he decided he's not going to smoke anymore because the concept of being around for a long time and being there for his granddaughter was bigger than his addiction. 
And that's when he decided, okay, that's it. I'm, I'm not going to smoke. And to make her feel better because he loved her so much, he said, that's it. I'm not going to smoke anymore. So he got a vision, got a vision mm -hmm. of, uh, and this is something that I talk about quite a bit, vision. You know, we operate, um, we operate on a certain vision that we have in our mindset. For instance, the, the drunkard, the drunkard has a vision of himself, right? The person that uh, is stumbling in life in a certain area, that person has a vision and that vision that he's holding on to, it's like a movie, right? We're watching this big screen TV. And obviously uh, it's estimated that between 70 to 80,000 thoughts are flowing through our minds every single day. What thoughts we're holding on to is creating a vision. That vision is creating a lifestyle. So you, you just shared that this, this, uh, this individual managed to get a hold of a vision, uh, a, an insight that showed him his future. And that vision, that vision alone, I mean, obviously we don't know how it all happened, but that vision even alone was able to convict this individual and really get him to, to analyze and think, well, wait a minute, you know, um, you got to have the right vision. Mm -hmm. Earlier, we talked once again about being a double minded man. It's hard to go forward, Edwin. It's hard to go forward if you don't have the right vision in your life. Right. And, and uh, yeah, help I mean, me. can, I, can I interrupt there? Go ahead. It's really your identity, how you see yourself. It's the same as a vision, but it's your identity. What do you say about yourself? You say, I'm an alcoholic, or I am, I am. Whenever, whenever you put a word behind I am, that's who you are. And people, I am a gambler, then you are a gambler. Or if you say, I love to, I love to gamble, I love to drink, I love to whatever, that is your identity. And if you don't change that identity, you cannot change your behavior. Behavior comes from your identity, not the other way around. You know, your, you know, your identity doesn't come from your behavior. Your behavior comes from your identity, how you, how you see yourself, how you imagine yourself, how you identify yourself or label yourself as what you are, what you love to do, what kind of person you are, how do you, you know, con you know how do you relate to other people? You know, so if you relate to other people through alcohol and gambling, then all those things are the kind of person that you are. And until you don't get down there in here and start saying, I am not that person anymore, nothing will change. That's that's key. That's key. Um, it wasn't until I looked myself. I do something called mi mirror talks. I know that some people find that weird. I get in front of the mirror and I talk to myself. I do it quite often. You know, honestly, it wasn't until I got in front of the mirror and I began to say Santos, you're not a gambler. And, you know, there's other addictions that I have overcome. But until I began changing, and this is what you're saying, until you until you begin changing that vision that you have in your mind, right? I'm sure you're going to agree with me that the battle has to be won up here mm -hmm. before the battle can be won in the physical realm. So how does one, how, how does one start? Where do we start doing that? Where do we start changing the vision? That starts, that really starts at a, you know, when you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. When you no longer want to be, you no longer want to continue what you're doing. But I mean, to the point where you like, I mean, you know, like they say you hit your low point. Yeah, you have to even hit below low point and be ready to make a change and be, you know, the change can come instantaneously if you really make that that decision i mean down deep or it can be a gradual change where you say one day at a time today i will i won't gamble for 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 today tomorrow i'll deal with what i got to deal with tomorrow i don't gamble today deal with it on a small you know basis don't think i'm not going to gamble for the rest of my life no i'm not going to gamble now 
I'm not gonna gamble in the next five hours if you know if you're in a place or if you're in that kind of if you're that kind of person who gambles all the time. Okay, the next for the next six hours, I will not gamble. You may gamble after that, but you make the commitment. The next six hours, I'm not gonna gamble. If you if you're really down deep into that, then I'm not gonna gamble for 12 hours. I'm not gonna gamble for 24 hours. And you keep expanding that to I'm not gonna gamble for two days or whatever. I'm not gonna drink. I'm not I'm not gonna drink for six hours. Whatever it may be, the addiction, you may have to chop it down into small pieces. Like they say, how do you eat an elephant? <laughs> One bite at a time. So you may have to take it one piece at a time with the commitment that you're going to continue that, you know, that process. You know, if you start it and then you say, ah, screw it, then or you get to the point in your life where you say, look, my family's affected, my finances are affected, my life is affected. I don't need it. I've had it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna cut it. Period. If you could do that. You have two methods now. You can do it the fast way, the instant way. Sometimes some people can't do that. You know, it's like smoking. You know, nicotine is in your system. Uh, gambling is in your system. It's psychophysical. So you've got to deal with the psychology of it and the physiology of it. Because sometimes in an addiction, there is actual physical manifestations that you have to deal with, you know. So you have to deal with those. And you, those sometimes need a gradual detox, you know, and work in that way. So those are just a couple of ways that you could deal with whatever, whatever addiction you're referring to. And one thing, too, obviously, you know, you're you're seriously in the cryptocurrency type of business. Uh, part of getting a vision. Would you agree? Would you agree that part of getting a new vision for yourself is finding something that's big, something that's bigger than you? It could be. Uh, I know this may sound a little strange, but what if you had a business on the internet that you were working at part time that you kind of got excited about? Now, is it possible, even though you're struggling with some form of addiction and you just stumble across a website, right? You stumble across a website, a business of some sort that you can relate to. Little by little, you begin that hobby, a business, whatever it is. Uh, what are, what are the chances that you can actually through that that type of uh, of life hack you can begin transforming? Well, I mean, that's the, that's you know that's the other thing too. You know, sometimes you have to kind of take your attention away from the addiction and put your attention into something positive in your life. You know, so what's more positive than than building your finances and figuring out another way to make money? Right now, the big one of the biggest industries is out there is not only the internet is cryptocurrencies, you know, because okay, crypto. If you don't know about cryptocurrencies, this is the future of money, you know. But eventually, right now, most money is digital anyway. All this stuff is digital. When you think about credit cards, credit cards is digital money. This is not real money. <laughs> It goes through the, the, the computer, you know, so that's what they're doing. You know, cryptocurrency hold, now. Hold, is, that, hold that, hold that card up a little bit more, so I in front of it. <laughs> I know. I just realized I threw my number out there. <laughs> yeah. You know, right. So it's all digital money now, anyway. And you see more and more people not using dollars. They don't. They go and buy a five dollar coffee with a freaking credit card. It's crazy. So yeah, some countries don't even have hundred dollar bills anymore. You know, they're cutting down the big bills. So they are pushing people towards digital money. Now, cryptocurrency is faster, cheaper to transfer from one person to another, uh, private, and and um, it's less expensive to transfer from one person to another. So the the future of money is going to go digital eventually. You know, and it's and it's they're right now they're working on it. Uh, cryptocurrency started with Bitcoin in 2009 by this guy named uh, Satoshi Nakamoto, and he created this idea called the blockchain technology. Now, cryptocurrency is the tip of the iceberg. The iceberg, the underneath of the iceberg, is the is the blockchain technology. That's what's going to take over the internet. And that's what's going to take over all kinds of, of communication and everything else because blockchain technology is about taking information like this and splitting it up into thousands of, of computers in one time. And then it all comes back together again. 
it's very secure, it's very fast, and it's, and it's easier to manage, you know? And that's really what all these companies are looking for. So even if the big companies are not dealing with the crypto itself, they're dealing with blockchain technology. And you see that more and more that that's what they're working on, you know? So if you're looking for something that is, that's, is present now and it's going to be in the future, no doubt about it. Cryptocurrency is where it's at. Okay, and I'm going to go one more. I'm going to go one more real quick because <laughs> I could go off on this. There are many ways to get into cryptocurrency. Just like you do stocks, you can buy and hold cryptocurrencies because cryptos are going up. So you can just buy them real quick, buy as many as you can. They're, they're, they're right now, there are about 2,000 different cryptocurrencies. Wow. But yeah, they're, they're up to that. Um, you just want to buy the, the the main ones, the top ones. And then you you it's like a savings account. You know, you put them away and you forget about them because in a few years or in five years, those things may double, triple, quadruple. You know, then you can bring it back and change it back to money. You know, there's trading. You can learn how to trade cryptocurrencies back and forth. You know, there's what's called mining because cryptocurrencies are mined. They are created. So you could either have a machine to mine them yourself or you can uh, pay somebody to use their machine so they mine for you. You know, so those are just three of the quick ways of how to get into cryptocurrencies. I'm not going to go off into all there. There are other ways and there's a whole, a whole bunch of other stuff going on. But I'll just give you that. It's an entire universe that's taking place. I know um, in, in in a little bit of my venture, I'm, I'm also... Uh, a partaker of cryptocurrency too, which is I'm, I'm actually doing something pretty good right right now with uh, some a company called OneCoin. But you know, real estate, music, business—it's becoming the ledger. The blockchain is actually going to become the ledger. Uh, of course, there's always going to be negatives, but we want to focus on the positives. We're transitioning a little bit in the interview here. We're going to be winding down pretty soon. Actually, we've gone over the. Uh, well, maybe we'll get close. We're going to be we're going to be winding down here in a little bit. But we've transitioned a little bit from self empowerment, negative addictions, and overcoming into business. And I wanted to do this because, you know, once again, uh, this is important for all of us. Uh, yes, it's important for us to really self empower ourselves to overcome this battle that's been unleashed against all humanity. Uh, it is a spiritual battle when it comes to addictions. We also, Edwin, you mentioned the fact that we need to be absolutely thinking about our future when it comes to finances. Um, you know, I don't know how long I'm going to be here. We, we, None of us really know, but we can't take the chance of saying, OK, well, you know, the heck with it. I'm just going to live my life the way it is. Um, Edwin's talking about an opportunity to get educated. I know that he has a website. I'm going to mention it. I'm going to actually have him mention it because he's an educator in that area. So if there is somebody here, obviously we've had quite a few viewers. If there is somebody here tonight that is interested in changing focus, uh, financial direction, obviously this is also going to help you with your addiction too, because like Edwin said, if we just focus on the negative addiction and woe is me and, and depression and all that we 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 can't do or, or all that we shouldn't be doing, of course, we should be focusing on what we should be doing. I'm always focused on empowering our strengths, not our weaknesses. There's always going to be negatives. There's always going to be positives. We can't completely get away from the negatives. OK, we can't completely get away, but we can focus on the positives. Mm -hmm. Uh, building a business from home part time, you know, focus, focusing on one day at a time, as Edwin mentioned. Right. And uh, changing the vision. Man, I tell you, that's I get up every single day. And, and sometimes, you know, Edwin, to be honest with you, from where I've come from. And some of the emails, in fact, I'm going to get away from talking about myself, but some of the emails that I get from those of you that are watching my, my channel or follow me on YouTube, I appreciate all of the comments uh, from the UK, from Australia, uh, overseas, here in the United States. Uh, my friends, we, you know, here we have an opportunity. Um, and we're not, I know I'm not asking for money. Usually I ask for donations. I haven't been asking for donations to this mission because I do 
that this labor of love, I do it out of the kindness of my heart. And I do invest money into the soldiers of self mastery, but I'm sure that Edwin is willing to educate people. You know, we want to work with people obviously that want to help themselves. That's true. But I'm sure that Edwin, uh, and I'm going to let him talk a little bit more on educating people about, you know, cryptocurrency, because that could be an avenue that can get you excited and help you even move away from your addiction. Mm -hmm. I believe that 100 percent. Yeah. I'm going to give you the floor here on that. OK, this is um, how much this is self-empowerment to be able to be financially independent. How much more self-empowerment can that be? You know, I mean, you are able to uh, take care of all your finances. You are independent from having to work for somebody. You know, we always think of um, it, we are into the mentality of nine to five. Work for someone. Trade your dollars for hours. That is not no. It is no longer necessary, and it is no longer the way of of really making uh, of building wealth. Because right now with the internet and the all the all, all of not only cryptocurrencies but all the other opportunities that are out there, and the just the idea of working together and building some kind of business together, you know, that is something that you couldn't do back in the day, you know, unless you created a company, you know. And right now, you you there. Are, this is really the way to make money now and in the future and that is to build your own business and that is to uh, to build on whatever your expertise is you know or whatever you love to do whatever grip brings you uh satisfaction build on that there are so many ways to do that you know and uh so if you it, i mean this is going off into different things but it all comes down to the same basic thing if you want to self-empower yourself, you have to do this psychologically. You have to do it physically. You have to do it financially. You know, you have to take care of your mind, your body, your spirit, and work as a uh, you know in all these different realms. You know, so um, basically, if you want to get in touch with me and and find out a little more, I have a couple of resources that I get for free. I'm not asking for for you to join me in anything. Uh, I have a I have a book about secrets to cryptocurrency that um, I could put in the chat so you can have that and you can go in there and that's a, that's a free uh, a free book. I have um, uh, some other information and stuff, you know, so you can always take a look at, I'll put it in the chat, my, my website and the book that you can go to to get uh, a free book on cryptocurrencies. All right, Morando. And, and the website again, uh you can go my personal website is edwincabrera.com i'm gonna put it here first of all i want to thank you once again it is an honor and a privilege to be here we've just spent what almost 40 minutes or a little bit over 40 minutes talking about some very important uh ideas and philosophies that not only are helping me but they're helping edwin and i'm sure that these things can help you also. And I believe in all of you. I know that you are well uh, capable of doing a lot more than you may ever come to realize. I'm the type of individual that I see, uh, I just see the potential in everybody. Uh, of course, you have to desire it. You have to want something. In the beginning, we talked about a little bit of desire. We talked about a desire and moving in the right direction. All it takes is just a little bit of desire. You know, we don't have to hit rock bottom. Uh, we don't have to become homeless. We don't have to lose our family. But unfortunately, some of us have been in those situations. I can attest to that. So um, uh, if you want to learn more, if you want to learn more, if you're hungry, into these things and what we shared with you tonight in this episode has piqued your interest don't put this aside my friends take advantage because time don't be like the watchers you guys remember what the watchers are right those that watch they're looking up they're always looking up because uh they're looking to the tops of buildings they're watching those people that are up there throwing their clocks and their watches they're throwing them off figuratively speaking, right? Why are they doing that? Why are these individuals throwing their clocks and their watches off the tops of buildings? 
Well, people want to see if time really flies. The truth is that time does fly, so we don't have to be like the watchers. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give Edwin the floor here. I'm going to let him give the last few words. Um, and once again, his information, along with my information, is going to be in the descriptive box of this video once it goes on YouTube. So the floor is yours. We're going to end after his last few words. And once again, I want to thank all of you that participated in this uh, Friday night alive session. <laughs> Thank you, Santos. It's been great. I, I enjoy doing this. I enjoy sharing. Like I said, I am a teacher at heart. I love to share the information. I hope that it does help somebody. You know, uh, basically, I give the last thing I would say is, and this is something that 99% of the people are not going to do. I'm going to tell you anyway, because, you know, I find I, I found this very difficult to do. Write it down. Write down where you want to go, where, what are your goals, what are your, you know, your ideas, write it down, follow it through, make a plan, go for the plan, don't deviate from the plan, you know, I mean, you could change the plan slightly, but the plan in the final analysis is always going to lead you to the same place is to get away from whatever it is that you're doing right now, you know, and like I said, most people won't do this, but anybody that you talk to has been successful, has written down, a made a plan, uh, follow the plan, and and really, you know, follow up on the plan. It's very easy. I tell you, it's three steps. You know, first, write it down, you know, uh, try to implement it, review it, go back to the plan, implement it, review it, implement it, review it. Just keep doing that. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. Eventually it's going to get you to where you want to be, you know? So, uh, but that's if you really want to be somewhere different from where you are now, you know? So the bottom line is it's got to start with you. Where do you want to be later? Not where you are now. You know? So I'll leave you with that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, you may not change the circumstances right now, but if you change your mind right now, right yes. now, guaranteed that you will change your circumstances later on and tomorrow. So with that said, I want to thank each and every one of you that participated. I see that we still have some viewers. It's been um, a great Friday night. We're going to see you. I'm going to be back here once again on Sunday, 4 p.m. Standard Time. And who knows, maybe we'll bring Edwin back and discuss a little bit more on cryptocurrency in the future um, if he if he allows the privilege for us to interview him again. Anytime. Um, hopefully uh, we, didn't, we didn't scare Edwin off here. So with that said, I will see you. Um, remember, the ball's in your court, my friends. You can make some very powerful changes in your life starting right now i'll see you in the next episode and remember to make every single day a super fantastic terrific over the top day daily in spite of and because of all right